The perfect budget pilot watch. Does it exist? Um, probably not. Nevertheless, the watch featured in this video gets pretty darn close as far as I'm concerned. So let's turn back the clock to early 2020. The UK has just been plunged into lockdown and the cabin fever has already started to set in. A parcel shows up. I take a look inside and it turns out to be a new watch from AV8. Several weeks later, that Spitfire Type 300 went on to receive some high praise from me as it seemed like a very solid, albeit experimental watch. A couple of months down the line, I took a look at another one of the brands under the same Dartmouth brand's umbrella, Spinnaker. That review wasn't quite as positive. Although the build quality was there, the aesthetics certainly weren't. I felt like the design was a bit of a mess. As I mentioned in that video, I wouldn't have spent my own money on that one. Well, Dartmouth Brands got back in touch recently for a third bite of the cherry. This time boasting an AV8 watch that from the product renderings looked even better than the Spitfire I looked at previously. This one looked more like a traditional Flieger with more subtle touches of aviation heritage sprinkled in there. And that takes us to today. Or should I say a few weeks ago because I've been testing out this new AV8 Flyboy Engineer Automatic for a while now. And I've been giving it a shot to see how it compares to some of the previous offerings. Here's the rundown. The watch came in the same cool canvas box as most other AV8 models. This looks great, but isn't flashy enough to make me think that money has needlessly been wasted on the packaging rather than the watch itself. What surprised me is the size is virtually identical to the Spitfire despite feeling noticeably smaller. You have a 41.9 mm diameter, 13.4 mm depth, and 50 mm lug to lug, which are all in all fairly traditional proportions for a pilot's watch. I imagine it's a combination of the colors used, the dial width, and the sleeker case design that give me that impression. It's a shame I have such thin wrists really because this piece is very comfortable and really doesn't wobble around much when fitted. It just doesn't look very in proportion when I'm wearing it. This model is available in three colors at the time of recording and they shipped me the appropriately named Mitchell, which is the blue dial variant. As you might expect, the case is constructed of 316L stainless steel, which is displayed in a primarily brushed finish with the signature AV8 glossy beveled edges approaching the lugs. In my opinion, the finishing is great considering the cost of the watch, which I'll mention later. And overall, the case just looks leaner and sexier than its predecessor, which had a certain bulk to it. The brushing goes excellently with the matte dial, making this a really versatile casual choice. The notched case back provides an adequate 50 meters of water resistance, though given the thickness of the rear, I'm somewhat disappointed that the performance isn't a little stronger. Despite this, I love the embossed flyboy icon, which features the classic 20th century fighter pilot imagery that this brand is known for. Very cool indeed. Keeping on theme is the large antique style conical crown, akin to that on vintage aviation watches from the period. Unsurprisingly, this is a dream when it comes to usage. It's very grippy and responsive, though it does jut out substantially and the lack of crown guards mean it could be exposed to heavy impacts. Regardless, it definitely suits the watch well and even features the same target insignia that reappears on the second hand. I'm not normally a fan of these, but because it's not enormous, I think it still looks quite sleek. A standout feature of this flyboy is the stainless steel bracelet. If you've watched multiple Ben's Watch Club videos, you'll know that affordable watch brands tend to cut some corners, a typical area being the strap. I have to say, AV8 have showcased once more that they go against the grain, providing us with an absolutely fantastic engineer bracelet that not only looks the part, but feels solid too. This one is comprised of solid links throughout and has a fully brushed finish, matching that of the main case. The milled clasp has three micro adjustments and is among the sturdiest I've come across with a very firm mechanism, which might be a tiny bit tricky to use, but it definitely won't loosen when secured. Even the solid end links integrate beautifully with the lugs, featuring the same directional brushing and curvature. For a watch under 250 pounds, this is as good as it gets. Most other brands would just chuck in a rubbish strap and then sell you this as a 50 pound extra. I wouldn't blame you for guessing that the rest of the watch must have suffered as a consequence of spending more on the bracelet. Fortunately, I can tell you that that doesn't seem to be the case. In fact, the fun continues. Over the dial, there's a piece of domed, scratch-resistant sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating. 
The blue tinge that that coating provides also complements the piece very nicely considering the colorway, though perhaps it won't look uh, quite as at home with the other ones. Distortion is very obvious as you tilt the watch, just like that on the Spitfire. This is just the stuff I look for, so it's bang on the money. Well, 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 is this dial a shift from the Spinnaker? That watch was ugly. This one looks lovely. I'm really pleased they sent me this colorway as I reckon this is probably the best looking model, though I like the green option too. You have a base color of deep blue at the center, which transitions into a matte black towards the circumference. The macro texture carries over from the Spinnaker I reviewed, but looks more at home here, as it is complemented by the white text and details. It has the consistency that that one lacked. I really enjoy the way that this face plays with the light, as the blue portion really comes through in brighter environments. Towards the center, you have a slim crosshair, the inspiration for which is fairly obvious. The raised minute track is very simple, with thick rectangular markers at each hour. The legibility of which is matched by the bold raised integers that help showcase the time. There's also an inner 24 hour ring and some subtle flyboy branding above the six o'clock position. On paper, it certainly sounds like there's a lot going on, but I'm pleased and kind of impressed at how well it's all come together this time. For me, it doesn't look too cluttered or overbearing. In fact, far from it. I also enjoy the dark date window. It perhaps sits more centrally than some of the watches, though it occupies the area that would have been taken up by both number rings. While the look is not perfectly symmetrical, the date wheel still blends in very well with the gray black dial edges. Inhabiting the central stem is a fairly standard Flieger handset with the black center and highly visible white filling. While perhaps not quite as easy to read as the Spitfire, you are still gonna have no problems reading this watch. That also extends to low light situations as this flyboy engineer has fairly good luminescence across the markers and hands. It's very strong at first, but it does fade rather quickly. You'll also see an unusual second hand beating along. This is a little like a lollipop hand, but features a target icon within the circle. The tip then extends right out to the markers, which is nice to see. Unsurprisingly, this is powered by a Seiko NH35 automatic movement, which is a fairly standard workhorse movement that is great for a watch at this price range, considering the rest of the package that we're getting here. It features hacking and hand winding, not found in the lower end 7S26, which you might find in Seiko 5 models, whilst maintaining a similar accuracy per day. This has a beat rate of 21,600 per hour or six beats per second, which does give you a semblance of smoothness to the tick. I'm sure you can Google the movement to find other specifics if you're interested. Now we reach the point of this video. If someone said to me, military themed aviation watch, this Aviate is about what I would hope someone would be thinking of. With this watch, you get hints of the aeronautical theming without it dominating the overall aesthetic and you're left with a watch that is very wearable as an everyday watch. Whether you've got an interest in this flight stuff or not, I think this strikes the balance even better than the previous watch I looked at, which was far from bad itself. And overall, it's an interesting take on the classic Flieger design, which is certainly worth considering if the current price of just £225 is within your budget. And I think they've also given me some sort of discount code. In fact, let me find out how much it was. BB. 15% off apparently using the code that's in the description. Apologies, I didn't realize this code existed in the last Aviate video. That takes this down to 191 quid, which I think is really good value for money. And it really pleases me that micro brands like this are coming up with some interesting and experimental designs because sometimes like with this one, they really hit upon a winner.